In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. As we rejoice in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ on this Easter Sunday, I would like to welcome our national audience to St. Agnes Cathedral in the Diocese of Rockville Center, New York. The Catholic Church on Long Island is so happy to be of service to you and in solidarity with you on this Easter Sunday morning. We are so happy you are joining us. Close to our hearts this day are the young and the elderly, families gathered together to pray at this holy time. Please know all of your families and all of your intentions in these painful times are at the center of the altar today. We remember in a special way at this Easter Sunday liturgy the souls of those who have died from the coronavirus and their families, and those who, as Pope Francis says, are writing the decisive events of our time. Public servants, doctors, nurses, supermarket employees, cleaners, caregivers, providers of transport, law and order forces, volunteers, priests, deacons, religious men and women, and so very many others. We remember all of our families and the efforts of each of us to care for our families and our neighbors. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who on this day, through your only begotten Son, have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity, 
Grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may, through the renewal brought by your Spirit, rise up in the light of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, You know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all the people, but to us, the witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him, all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not of what is on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, your life, appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you and, and with your, your spirit. spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. 
On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning, while it was still dark, and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, They have taken the Lord from the tomb, and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial clothes there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial clothes there and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed. For they did not yet understand the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I have traditionally greeted at this Easter Sunday Mass at St. Agnes Cathedral our college students who have returned home for Easter. I always ask them to stand and the packed crowds applaud with appreciation. This morning through this national telecast, I greet college students from all over the nation. Most of you are home working on your classes long distance doing a lot of Zoom time, both academically and socially. Whether you are at Stony Brook University, Hofstra University, Adelphi University, Malloy College, or one of the fine community colleges here on Long Island, whether you are back home from St. John's University, Cornell or Columbia University, Providence College, Clemson University, Lehigh University, Steubenville University, The Ohio State University, The University of Texas, or The University of Southern California, I want to thank you all for the inspirational way you witness to your Catholic faith at the great universities of this country and your radical fidelity to the Sunday Mass celebrated on your university campuses. I also thank our children, our teens, our high school students for the wonderful way you trust and rejoice in the power of the risen Christ streaming through your lives in these challenging times of the COVID-19 crisis. We are so proud of each and every one of you. I would like all of you to stand up in your living rooms and receive my prayers, applause, and appreciation, along with that of Bishop William Murphy, the great priest of St. Agnes Cathedral, and your own parents and families who are with you at home. The 20th chapter of the Gospel of John presents us with the image of the empty tomb. And that image leaves us with a question. 
What drove Mary of Magdala to the tomb early that morning? Was it a broken heart trying to find some resolution in the midst of terrible confusion? Was it the steadfast loyalty of a strong and determined woman who still had some fading sense of hope? Was it some beautiful, unconscious intuition in which her memories of Jesus and his prophetic words and wisdom made her realize deep down that the crucifixion could not simply end with death and a sealed tomb. Mary was led to that empty tomb the way that you and I are led to that same empty tomb this Easter Sunday morning as the world continues to experience the traumas tragedies, fears, and financial, economic, and employment upheavals of the COVID-19 crisis. Peter and John's race to the tomb reminds us of the urgency in our short, fragile lives on earth to find the risen Christ and to love him with all our mind, heart, soul, and strength. Peter had so recently betrayed Christ. He still had the bitter memory of the cock crowing three times, ringing in his ears and in his repentant heart. In his Palm Sunday homily, Pope Francis explored our own betrayals of the Lord. Let us look within. If we are honest with ourselves, we will see our infidelities. How many falsehoods, hypocrisies, and duplicities? How many good intentions betrayed? How many broken promises? How many resolutions left unfulfilled? The Lord knows our hearts better than we do. He knows how weak and irresolute we are, how many times we fall, how hard it is for us to get up, and how difficult it is to heal certain wounds. Jesus healed us by taking upon himself our infidelity and by taking from us our betrayals. Instead of being discouraged by the fear of failing, we can now look upon the crucifix and feel our Lord's embrace. This morning, we stand inside the empty tomb with Peter, among the burial claws. We stand in a sad but repentant solidarity with Peter's betrayal of Christ, his weakness, his cowardice, his fear, and at times, his paralysis. We also stand in solidarity with a courageous Peter, Peter the Rock, as portrayed in the first reading from the 10th chapter of the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proclaims the risen Lord boldly, courageously, and decisively. He holds nothing back. We contrast Peter's shame as he heard the cock crow three times with the Peter illumined by the fire and light of the resurrection. In his Urbi et Orbi Easter message, message to the church and the world this morning, Pope Francis said that the risen Christ's glorified wounds are wounds that are windows of hope. He asked us to pray for an end to the pandemic and also asked for powerful prayers of peace for so many troubled areas of our world that need the peace of the risen Lord. Syria, Yemen, Lebanon, Iraq, the need for productive dialogue between Israelis and Palestinians, Mozambique, eastern regions of the Ukraine, and the plight of the global refugee during this time of pandemic. Wounds become windows. We see that in Peter. 
The glorified wounds of the risen Christ touch the wounds of Peter the way they touch our wounds and the wounds of the world on this Easter Sunday morning. We marvel at the change in Peter, and we stand in solidarity with Peter, open to change, open to our own personal conversion and resurrection, right in the midst of the Paschal mystery shining at the heart of the COVID-19 crisis. The risen Christ stands ready to walk through the padlocked doors of our hearts that prevent us from fully embracing the Paschal mystery and life-giving and life-changing conversion. The Holy Father said that in the face of the tragedy of the pandemic, so many of our false securities in life have crumbled. On this Easter Sunday morning, we surrender our false securities and illusions. We drop all of our resurrection, conversion, all of our conversion defense mechanisms. We ask the risen Lord to roll the stones of fear and sin away from our true hearts, hearts on fire with the risen Christ, hearts that with the risen Lord have come to cast fire on the earth. Dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal Mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promised to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you renounce Satan and all his works? and all his empty show. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting? I do. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Dear brothers and sisters, filled with Easter joy, let us pray earnestly to God, who graciously listens to our prayers. For the shepherds of our souls, that they may have the strength to govern wisely the flock entrusted to them by the Good Shepherd, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the whole world, that it may truly know the peace given by Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our brothers and sisters who suffer, remembering the sick of our parish, especially Anne Dillon and those with the coronavirus, that their sorrow may be turned to gladness, which no one can take from them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the souls of the faithful departed, especially Jean Ferguson, Eileen Harkins, Stephenson Kelvin John, and Crescencia Altagracia de Loveras. 
for the intention of this Holy Mass, Dr. Robert and Gloria Batone, and for the needs and intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts and the hearts of those who are watching on Catholic Faith Network. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O God, who know that our life in this present age is subject to suffering and need, hear the desires of those who cry to you and receive the prayers of those who believe in you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Exultant with paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Free is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. 
Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. You never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to a second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Agnes and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant, Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, my assistant bishops, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, 
give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow in the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy, not worthy that, that you should enter under my roof, roof but, but only say, say the, the word, word and, and my soul shall be healed. healed. Seek not to where Jesus 
Let us pray. Look upon your church, O God, with unfailing love and favor, so that renewed by the Paschal mystery, she may come to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. On this Easter Sunday, when we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we pray for all those who are carrying crosses and burdens, as well as for all who are serving on the front lines. We know that the current crisis has impacted families, businesses, and institutions financially and emotionally. Parishes and dioceses throughout the country are working continuously to support the faithful through televised and online masses, parish food pantries and meal programs, Catholic charities and hospitals, and online learning for school children. Thank you to all the parishioners in the Diocese of Rockville Center and around the country for continuing to support your parishes. We are so grateful to all of you who have subscribed to online giving and to those who have mailed in your weekly contribution envelopes. This is vital to the sustaining and reemergence of our parishes, schools, and many other ministries. This crisis has put a strain on our parish budgets and will seriously impact our mission. If you are able, please consider signing up for online giving or mailing in your weekly envelopes. A new text-to-give option has also been developed for all parishes in the Diocese of Rockville Center and in dioceses around the country, enabling you to make weekly donations using your smartphone. For information, please visit your parish website or call your local parish. Please continue to pray for those who are sick or have lost a loved one, as well as for all the heroic people serving on the front lines of this crisis. May God bless us as we help one another to carry this cross. For a comprehensive schedule of all the liturgies and prayer for the Easter octave, Divine Mercy Sunday, and the Easter season, from here at St. Agnes Cathedral in the Diocese of Rockville Center, St. Patrick's Cathedral in New York City, or the Vatican, please visit the website of Catholic Faith Network, cfntv.org. Thank you to the CBS Network for their gracious national coverage of this Easter Sunday Mass. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life for the resurrection of his only begotten endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exulting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go forth the masses and it alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God, alleluia.